In this video, let's begin a new chapter. This new chapter is on liquidity risk reporting and in this opening video of this chapter, we'll be taking a look at a very simple liquidity risk report and this report is the deposit tracker report. Okay, The deposit tracker report, please note, contains information about the current size of the bank's deposits together with a forecast of how the level of these deposits is expected to change going forward in time. As far as a recommended frequency of this report is concerned, this report is to be tracked on a weekly and in some cases a monthly basis and this report, please note, provides the ALCO an idea of the loans to deposits ratio, henceforth referred to as the LTD ratio. Okay, please note that this report, it tells us how this LTD ratio has behaved in the immediate short term. The actual values of this ratio in the past few months and the expected value of this ratio going forward in time. Okay. Now, please note that from a liquidity risk standpoint, the bank would want to maintain this LTD ratio close to a certain target number that the bank may have in mind. Okay. From a liquidity risk standpoint, lower values of this LTD ratio are favorable. From a profitability standpoint, lower values of this LTD ratio actually hurt the bank. Okay, If LTD ratio is on the lower side, it means that a smaller fraction or let's say a smaller proportion of incoming deposits is being converted to loans and therefore the net income of the bank, the net interest income I mean of the bank would kind of suffer. Okay, now let's move on and take a look at a quick sample of this deposit tracker report. I am assuming I am standing as of this point in time. This is the 28th of May and I have numbers both to my left and to my right. Numbers to my left are actually month end actuals. Numbers to my right are forecasts. Okay, what I have done here is that I have grayed out a lot of these numbers so that we can only focus on numbers which are not grayed out and take a look at how these numbers relate to each other. Okay, now take a look at these numbers. As of 28th of May 2009, these numbers essentially tell me how my deposits are split by customer type. Okay, take a moment and go through you know, these different types of customers who place deposits with my bank. Okay, this number tells me the total aggregate level of my deposits as of the 28th of May. Okay, this number, it tells me the month on month change with respect to the previous month. Okay, and then going forward in time, we have forecasted how different customer deposits will change over time. Okay, and therefore aggregating all these numbers together, we have forecasted how the total level of deposits is going to change over time. Okay, then this is as far as my deposits are concerned. Now let's take a look at my loans, which are my assets. Okay, now as of 28th of May, the total or aggregate customer assets, read this as my total loans, stands at this number. Okay, then going forward in time, I am assuming that means over the upcoming month, drawdowns on let's say credit lines that I have extended to my customers would be this much. So think of this to be increase in my total or aggregate loans and then 
payments from my existing loans loans which are maturing amounts to this much so net net this minus this gives me this as the total amount by which my total loans will change over the upcoming month this is the increase this is the decrease so net net this is the change okay so this number plus this guy gives me the total size of my loan book as of the end of the upcoming month end of june okay so this is how these numbers have been populated okay so once you have the aggregate deposits and the aggregate loans or let's say the aggregate assets you can do this divided by this to arrive at the ltd ratio the loans to deposit ratio okay so these values of the ltd ratio these are actual values these values are forecasted values okay i've already told you this that from a liquidity risk standpoint the bank would want to control the ltd ratio and try and maintain it as close as possible to a target number okay so along with this information of how deposits are going to change with time and how loans are going to change with time this report it also contains information about what the bank needs to do to get its ltd ratio closer to a target number okay so getting the ltd ratio closer to a given target can be achieved by either changing the l which means changing the assets or changing the d which means changing the liability okay so for example let's say if the firm wants to get its ltd ratio to 84% i am assuming at the moment i am standing as of this date okay so 31st of jan 2009 okay so 31st of jan 2009 had an ltd ratio of 94.93% so to get this ltd ratio down to 84% what should you do if you want to retain the level of assets and change the level of your liabilities i mean change the level of your deposits what you what would you need to do you will need to increase your liabilities okay so how much should your liabilities be increased by is given by this number okay you can very quickly actually check this number it will be given by take the actual assets which is this guy so 2 2 6 6 0 0 0 four this is the actual level of the assets divide it by the target level of your ltd and that's 84% minus the current level of your deposits and that is 2387036 okay so this you can punch in these numbers in your calculator and check that it should give you 310588 okay so your liabilities need to be increased by this much to make your ltd ratio move from 94.93% to 84% okay similarly you can do this calculation that how much should your assets be decreased from this level and your deposits or liabilities retained at this level to make the ltd move from 94.93 again to 84 you can check this that your assets need to be decreased by this amount and that is why this number is a negative number okay so this is about your deposit tracker report essentially what we've just said is that it includes information about month end actuals for deposits broken down or split by customer type this this report contains information of how my deposits aggregate deposits i mean change from one month end to the other the month on month change this report contains information about the aggregate customer assets or loans and based on a and c this report works out 
the LTD ratio. This report we have already seen also contains forecasted numbers up until the end of the calendar year and please note that these forecasts have been arrived at by using the historical trend information coupled with inputs which come from relationship managers. Okay. Also, we have seen that this report gives us the information of how much the liabilities which will need to be increased or the assets need to be reduced for us to meet a certain requirement of the LTD ratio. Okay, this is as far as the deposit tracker report is concerned. One can also actually plot the deposit tracker report graphically and this is how that report would look like. The blue bars, these denote how the deposits have been changing over time. Up until this point, we have actuals. Beyond this point, we have forecasted numbers. The red or the orange bars, they denote how loans have been changing over time. Okay, The deposits and, and the loans, they are showing some kind of a diverging kind of behavior and because of this diverging kind of behavior, the LTD ratio, which is plotted as this gray line, is actually going down with time. Before we stop, please note that the deposit tracker report, it also contains information of how customer deposits are split by tenor. Okay, so in this plot, we have plotted how deposits, they split by the account type and by the tenor. Okay, please note that the line plot corresponds to retail banking and it's meant to be read along this secondary axis. Okay, the most important thing that we should note about this plot is that relatively speaking, Retail banking contributes a significant portion of the total deposit base of this bank. Okay, see the scales involved on this secondary axis are greater than the scale which is on this primary axis. Okay, that's the first thing for you to note. The second thing for you to note is that retail deposits are concentrated, see, at the short end of this tenor or maturity spectrum okay so retail deposits we are saying are concentrated in terms of current accounts and rolling deposits that means retail deposits have to be treated as short-term liabilities because a significant chunk of the liabilities of this bank are short-term in nature this bank will kind of suffer when it comes to the calculation of liquidity metrics, metrics such as liquidity coverage ratio and the net stable funding ratio, NSFR. Okay, because we have a high proportion of short term liabilities, the denominator of the LCR, liquidity coverage ratio, will suffer, it will be higher. Because we have a high level of short term liabilities, the numerator of the NSFR will suffer. Why? Because these liabilities are less than one year and therefore the available stable funding weight of these liabilities will be lower and therefore the numerator of NSFR will be lower. Okay. So for LCR, the denominator will be higher. For NSFR, the numerator will be lower. On both accounts, your liquidity metrics will suffer. Okay, so it is in this bank's best interests that it actually runs a marketing exercise to determine if its retail customers may be interested in moving their deposits into fixed term or let's say notice accounts. Okay, so if this can be done, it will help improve the liquidity metrics of this bank. Okay, this opening video of this chapter was therefore focused on this simple report called the deposit tracker report.